Hi, this is Ken Gidge, and this is Gidge World. Today is November 30th, 2012, and I am told by December 12th, all the world will be gone. Now, there are religions and philosophies that say that this is going to happen, and it may happen, and it may not happen. Let's just hope it doesn't happen. Well, in Gidge World, we, it's kind of interesting. I am a state representative, just elected as a state representative from Nashville, New Hampshire. I am a Democrat, and I always say Democrats are good, Republicans are bad, and it gets me in a lot of trouble. Having said that, uh, I was elected in November, and I have sitting beside me uh, Tracy, Stacy, Stacy, excuse me, Lawton, and you were also elected as a Democrat from Ward 4, Nashville, New Hampshire. Is that correct? That is correct. Now, when you were elected, how did you feel? Um, Happy? Static? Oh, it was the most amazing feeling in the world. Why? Um, because it was my lifelong dream to become a state representative and to serve the citizens of my district. And so that was, and you worked hard to get elected, yes, I take it? Yes, sir, I did. And uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, transgender, explain that. Yes. Um, I'm an openly transgendered female, and uh, I've been in transition for a little over five years now. And um, that is basically when someone uh, doesn't identify themselves with the gender that they um, were assigned at birth. And uh, I, I identify as a female, although at birth I was born male. And, um, and with that, um, made for uh, a historical first uh, in my election. Okay, now, uh, during your election, was it ever brought up? Was it ever used against you? Were any, was anyone mean to you? Absolutely not. My, my gender never, uh, my gender identity never So uh, Republicans or Democrats never? Never once. Well, we should, up here it should be commended. Yes. Uh, now, you're the first historically in the history of the state of New Hampshire? The history of New Hampshire as well as the country. Um, not the first to hold office, but I'm the first openly transgendered female to be elected to any state legislator in the country. Really? Yes. No, I didn't know that. Um, and then all hell broke loose. Yes, now, sir. you're transgender, you're female, now yes. bond male. No one has ever complained about it. Uh, Republicans or Democrats, you win. Yes. And then from your previous town, which is Laconia, New Hampshire, where you lived, and now you're in Nashville, New Hampshire, yes. they wrote a story. Um, yes, they, they wrote a story um, last week uh, regarding um, my, my past uh, criminal convictions. OK, talk about it. Um, in the past. Um, uh, I've, yeah, I've had some questionable um, things that I, I've done uh, and some things I've maintained my innocence on. Um, that they were felonies? They, there was at least three felonies under one charge, yes. And what were you charged for? Uh, they, were, they all stemmed from uh, fraudulent use of a credit card. Okay. And what happened from that? I guess you go to court and then what happened? Um, after I went to court, um, uh, I had to go undergo some evaluations because there were questions about my competency. Um, once those were completed um, and they, they w was determined that I was competent to stand trial, I stood trial and I um, was given uh, some suspended time uh, on two of the charges. Uh, the other charge I did receive some more suspended time. How much? Uh, Oh, I can't remember. In total, um, it, it could have been up to 35 years. Up to 35 years. And, and um, I received a 12 month, um, 12 months to be served in the New Hampshire House of Corrections with six months suspended. And um, when I was in, in incarcerated, um, my behavior was, uh, you know. Good, and good, you got out. And I was able to get out in uh, what they call two thirds good time. And I only served a total of four and a half months. Okay, uh, so you had three felonies, and now are you on a probation? I am no longer on probation. I ended probation in November of 2010. 
Okay, so you're not on probation, but if within the next 10 years? Well, within um, 10 years' time, I was, I'm supposed to remain on good behavior. Otherwise, the suspended time could come forth and I could be facing uh, part of that time or all of it, but I will face something if um, I commit any sort of state, uh, local, or federal crime. And one of the problems, obviously, is we're not sure because we actually just got off the phone with the Attorney General's office yes. and they can't figure if you, because you have a felony uh, and you did serve your time, but you're yet, you have 10 years of needing to be, having to have good behavior. Mm -hmm. We're trying, everybody's trying to figure out if you can keep the office yes. that you've been elected to. Yes. All right, so how, now, after <clears throat> the uh, newspaper uh, ran, ran the story, I believe it was Laconia? The Laconia Daily Sun. Okay, yes. after they ran the story, then all hell yes. broke loose. What happened? Um, I started to receive uh, calls from uh, various uh, newspapers, uh, including uh, Channel 9 News, and uh, basically, they wanted to know if the, the reports were true. Um, and I, I simply had stated on one, I did one interview um, because after that I was advised not to, uh, talk, to, to talk to anyone um, for m many different reasons. Um, but the, I did give an, an interview to, uh, to a reporter and I had stated that I'm not going to deny the the stories and the accusations in the story because they are true and um, questions were about the felonies about the true. felonies okay. and it was a whole slew of other questions that were asked of me um, including did I ever inform the voters uh, did I uh, purposely deceive anyone and um, my answers to that were no uh, the number a number of my uh, supporters knew, um, and for those who didn't know, they were uh, given opportunities to ask any question of me because m myself and anything about me was up for questions and scrutiny during the campaign process. And if I had won, everything I would do from there forward would also be up for scrutiny. Well, for the people who are watching this, probably not in the Nashville area, because this will be on YouTube, you have to understand <clears throat> New Hampshire is the fourth largest governing body in the English-speaking world. We have 400 state representatives. We're the only government which is a volunteer government, which means we only make $100 a year. Now, the last two years up in New Hampshire, there have been 297 Republicans <coughs> and 103 to 106 Democrats. So the Republicans have had a supermajority. They still have a supermajority until uh, Stacey, <coughs> myself, are, uh, you know, uh, sworn in uh, coming this uh, December. So you can imagine now, uh, where are we? We're in the midst of politics, and they said, you didn't inform the voters. Is there any law that says you've got to inform the voters? Currently, there is no, <coughs> excuse me, currently there's no law that says you actually have to inform the voters, although it would be, um, I believe it would be right of a candidate to tell the voters, but there's nothing currently in place to do a background check or to there's no law that states I must disclose everything of my past. And I'd like to remind people, if we did a background check on all the politicians who run for political office, we'll have no one. Because everyone at one time or another has done something. Um, and the founding fathers, my God, they were, they were in a, because they were under one government, were considered almost terrorists until mm -hmm. our constitution came about. Mm -hmm. So... That's ridiculous, and yes. I think that, would you think that this is politics? I would think this is um, politics, and it's a story that has um, a sensation, and the press, uh, as they always do, they're going to get the story, and they've done that. Well, I know that the uh, union leader has done some good work. I yes. mean, I can't, you know, we can, cannot complain. Uh, this is National Telegraph, this front page. 
Telegraph front page, Telegraph front page, three days in a row, front page union leader. I believe the Concord Monitor has done quite a bit. There's been all sorts of people from around the country calling. I think that uh, this must be a lot of pressure. Tell me, how is this done? How has this been uh, working on you? Um, I've been holding up surprisingly well. Um, you know, years ago when this first all took place, I think it was harder for me then. Um, and I knew that this possibly could uh, take on what it, the life that it's taken on. And so I kind of uh, mentally was preparing for it. Uh, I can't say it's been easy. Uh, it's been a test of my emotional strength. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, but I believe, you know, it is politics, and I haven't really lost any sleep over it. It's just, it hurts to see a ton of negative things said about, you know, yourself. And when, you know, you, someone like me, um, I know I've changed. It's in my past. That's where I put it. And every single day, I have done nothing but try to better myself and try to help someone else ever since the day I walked out of the correctional institution. You're a religious person? Um, I'm, I'm, I follow Buddhism and I also am a Unitarian Universalist. Okay, so you've had support all around? I've had support um, from my um, religious community at the Unitarian Universalist Church in the area and from friends from around the state and around the country have been, uh, you know, saying things like uh, keep your chin up. Um, hang in there, uh, just any number of things that they could do to, to boost my spirits. Well, um, this is, this, this is quite, I, I, I believe a lot of this uh, has just been politics, and, I, and as I just mentioned that the uh, Republicans up here have had a super majority, yes. and they basically have lost it now, yes. the Democrats have a small majority. But I think this may be their last. I, I, I believe this is their, their last um, uh, gunfight, if you will. Um, the last two years in Concord have um, been crazy. Um, and I, I, you know, I just, I ran because I wanted to, to change some of that atmosphere that had been going on. And I think when this broke, um, I think the Republicans went with it, ran with it. And um, I think, like I said, as I mentioned just a moment ago, it's their last gunfight. They're, they're going out kicking and screaming. Well, you were duly elected and yes. you, you never, it, it was known that you were uh, transgender. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so that must have made you feel good that you were elected and, and people did know this. But now it's gone to another stage. Yes. And we're really not sure. No. Uh, lawyers, we just got off the phone, as I said, with the Attorney General's office mm -hmm. and they don't know. No. So there's a good opportunity. You could still run legally. Yes. Lawfully. And I, I wanted to mention, um, never once um, since I ran last year for a selectman and never once this year when I ran for state representative uh, did I know that I possibly could be breaking the law. My understanding was that I've satisfactorily completed the obligations to the correctional system and um, I've never once believed that I could possibly be doing anything wrong. Um, I believe that I was duly qualified to run and possibly win. Well, obviously you did win, and I believe you are qualified, yeah. and uh, uh, this is kind of very odd because, uh, you know, you've got to make up your mind. You're either going to uh, sign this. By the way, this is a resignation, uh, and it's written up by attorney David Campbell, who's also a state representative, a Democrat, and uh, uh, we don't like it, No, to be honest with you. I, I don't like it at all. I'm not going to say that I think what's gone on in the last week is very fair. Um, I believe I would have made 
a brilliant state representative, and I believe that my ideas uh, were great. Um, the uh, information I ran on, I believe, was a, you know apt and to the point, and I believe that, um, like I said, I would have been made a really good state representative. But given the climate of how this has taken on a life of its own, um, if it's found that I am legally eligible to serve, I don't believe over the next two years I could get anything done. I mean, um, in talks that I've had with you, we've talked about political capital or different things that, you know, you, you come in there with uh, a certain ability to, ha you know, make things happen, you know, and work with people. I just don't feel, though, as though that I can go in there with any sort of political capital at the moment, you know, given the circumstances. And um, I, I am going to sign the letter and I think it's in the best interest of the, the citizens of my district, um, the best interest of the state, and the best interest of the New Hampshire Democratic Party that I step aside and I let uh, the city hold a special election to fill this vacancy. Um, and with that, I, I you know, I okay. will give my resignation. Okay. Uh, uh, Stacy will sign this. Uh, it will be delivered to the Secretary of State today. Uh, he's officially has resigned, and I will, I will witness that. And all, also, there are people in this room who also uh, uh, are watching this take place. Okay, now let me just sign my name to it. Um, you know what you just said. So it's right here. It is signed and sealed, be delivered to the uh, Secretary of State today. Um, what I enjoyed was just you explaining. It's not many people. I mean, it's a, it's a very odd circumstance that you're in, obviously. Mm -hmm. But not many people would, would kind of look at it the way, way you are. I mean, uh, you didn't say you're saving the party. You didn't. You just, it's like you're talking to your, your constituents. What would you like to say to them? I'd just like to say that I, you know, I thank them for the opportunity to possibly be able to serve. I thank them for their vote of confidence on November the 6th. Um, and never once did I, you know, deceive any of them. Um, and uh, that to please keep uh, their eyes open and um, to you know the candidates that might follow for this position, and also to you know to not rule me out for future political office because once you know we figure things out, and I've had a chance to uh, you know let this cool off, and you know only time will tell you know what what I might run for in the future because my my. Uh, service to the community uh, will not end and I'll always be out there working with them and fighting for them even if I'm not in elected office um, but hopefully someday this opportunity may arise again and at that for state, state representative but you are in elected office yes now besides as the far as that position is concerned <clears throat> which is which is a um, it's uh, selectman from Ward 4 in Nashua and for uh, the viewers that don't know what selectmen are in Nashua, we are election day officials. Unlike, say, a town like Hudson, where That's selectmen, Hudson, New Hampshire, Hudson, New okay. Hampshire they uh, have a board of selectmen that uh, is their town's governing body. But the selectmen in Nashua, we are election day officials, and we oversee the election process. Um, and... Um, I haven't made up my mind exactly what I'm going to do with that position as of yet, um, but I do um, 
I do uh, plan on running for state, represent state representative again in the future, and um, maybe next time we can get it right all the way around. Well, I know, uh, I know that uh, it's being looked at regarding the selectmanship, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Paul Bergeron here in the city of Nashville is looking at it, mm -hmm. and, uh, and by the time, um, it, you, in about two weeks, you're going to find out that you either couldn't or could uh, run and serve. But if anybody really wants to know, I mean, he has, you know, resigned, and you really didn't know what took place. No. And again, like, I would just want to reiterate again that I never again, uh, n uh, not that, uh, never did I think I was doing anything wrong criminally or doing anything to violate state statute. I believe, uh, and I still believe, that I was duly qualified to run and win, and I believe that I am qualified to be able to take the seat. But as I said a moment ago, it's in the best interest for me to resign at this time. Okay, I think we're going to take a short break. There might be some people out here who have questions. Uh, then uh, we'll continue probably for about another probably 10 or 15 minutes, and uh, we'll just close up. So this is Ken Gidge. This is Gidge World. We'll be back in a moment. We're back. This is Ken Gidge, and this is Gidge World. Uh, we're talking with Stacy. Uh, Lawton, who just resigned from being a state representative. Um, we have some questions from people in the audience. Uh, who are you and where you're from, and what is the question? Uh, my name is Simone Rios. I'm a freelance reporter. I'm currently writing for the Union Leader, and I've been following this story. I believe I've had three stories in the last week on Stacy Lawton's decision-making process. Um, I'd like to know, Stacy, what it's like being transgender in New Hampshire. Um, and also, if you could talk about your time in prison, um, what prison you went to, uh, if you were there in the, in the men's facility, uh, and how that led to your decision to uh, enter the political process. Um, also, if you could talk about uh, if you think that your gender identity has anything to do with this whole controversy? Well, um, being transgendered in New Hampshire is, is unique to say the least. Uh, for the most part, New Hampshire is a very conservative state. Um, but I personally haven't found too much uh, negativity um, regarding my gender identity in New Hampshire. Um, if, every now and then I get a few uh, comments uh, that are very rude, um, but uh, I've learned to accept that and uh, move on from that uh, and, you know, not let small things like that bother me. Uh, as far as when I was in, when I was in uh, the Belknap County Department of Corrections, uh, because my, uh, the main factor played that I am legal, legally male, so their policy is anyone that is legally male must reside in the male housing quarters. Um, it didn't matter if I was the, uh, a transgendered female or not. Um, I was also the first transgendered female to serve time in the uh, Belknap County Department of Corrections, uh, as far as I was aware from the correctional staff. Um, so when I went in, uh, one of their um, issues was, um, we've never had an inmate like this, so what are we going to do? And the decision was quickly made to place me with the men. In initially, they put me in protective custody uh, because they were unsure as to what the general population, how they might react to, um, you know, my being there. Um, shortly after I had arrived and received my housing assignment, I was then um, transferred into general population because they, they felt as though I could, quote, handle my own. And um, 
even after transferring to general population, I was still in with the male population, and um, it, uh, it still didn't play uh, a, 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 uh, any major role. Um, the inmates just looked at me as, uh, as another inmate. Um, and you'll have to forgive me, what was the last part of your question? I was going to ask if you thought that it played a role in this whole controversy. Um, well, I'd say to, to a small degree. Um, I can't say for sure because n nothing that I have read from any, uh, anybody from any political party or, um, or any, uh, any citizen uh, who I haven't really heard anything specific said that would, um, you know, make me believe that, um, that I'm go being gone after because of my gender identity. But I, I, I believe that uh, maybe to a small extent, because, you know, I am new and uh, I am historic, um, I think for a lot of people it pushed the boundaries uh, over the edge a little bit. So I think it may have played a small part, but we, a, and we will you know. we will see. Uh, it's going to be very well clear by tomorrow that this is over. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be interesting to see what takes place on the television this weekend, or or, or people how they write about it. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone else have a question? Um, you mentioned uh, Mary Alice Gillen, a reporter from the Telegraph. Um, you mentioned, obviously, your election was historic. I was just wondering how can that... Get, I'm sorry, can you get a little closer and speak a little louder? Sure. Okay. Um, Mary Alice Gill from The Telegraph. Um, I was just wondering how that historic win for you, um, being our first openly transgender um, legislature in New Hampshire, how did that pressure kind of play into everything else that's been going on um, in your decision to kind of try to hold on to your seat? Because two days ago you said you were going to resign, you went on WMUR, and then yesterday you decided to go the other way. So I'm just curious as to how that all played out in your mind. Um, well, as far as uh, being the first openly transgendered female and how it would relate to that, I, I don't think uh, my gender identity um, ever really played uh, a factor in my decision making. Um, and um, you know, I it, it's it's interesting because when when I ran. I tried to divert a lot of the focus onto the issues that, that we faced as a state um, rather than my gender identity. Um, so I, you know, it, it's, you know, a great honor to have, you know, that distinction, but um, being transgendered, uh, I think, played a very small if none at all into any of the decisions that I've made. Although, you know, if I had taken the seat, there would have been some uh, LGBT um, legislation that I would have worked on, uh, you know, but, you know, I, I hope someone else is able to work on those over the next two years, you know, when the time is right. Anybody else have any questions? Okay. So, um, yeah, so I think Mary Alice kind of touched on this, but uh, having gone back and forth over the last few days, um, if you could kind of talk to me about uh, what pressures specifically led you in different directions. The Republicans have been calling for you to step down. Uh, the Democrats, as I see it, have been urging you to step down, but haven't called for it explicitly. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about what's been going through your mind over the last few days uh, in the context of your interactions with with people like Ken Gidge and uh, and other leading Democrats. Um, you know, I, I I look at the the reports from um, the different Republican leaders, and um, I was not going to decide to stay in or to resign based on anything they had to say. Um, that's they, the truth. That's, yeah, I'm not going to listen to, to, uh, to certain 
uh, Republicans. I mean, yes, there are certain Republicans that I, I get along with and that I would agree with, but it's interesting that the Republicans that I'm friends with um, never once asked me to, to specifically resign or to um, put an end to anything. Um, it was all Demo uh, not, it was all Republicans that um, that um, I didn't know personally, and so um, you know. And then when I had initially, it was uh, I was being advised not to ask any, uh, not to answer any questions that were asked of me, and um, and to just not resign. Hopefully, it'll mull over. And then um, by who? Uh, for certain. Um, well, I mean, I don't mean yeah. names. I mean Republicans, Democrats. It was they were de uh, Democrats um, mm -hmm. within the uh, the the party portion, not uh, anyone that's uh, uh, elected. And what changed your mind? Um, what changed my mind to, uh, to to resign? To resign? Well, um, I was, you know. Trying to weigh out the options, uh, you know, trying to weigh out, you know, how the voters felt, because I can certainly tell you from the voters that um, I have spoken to, including there was one uh, voter this morning uh, downtown who I saw who I didn't know. He looked me in the eye and he says, Do not resign unless you have to. And so you've been treated pretty good. Yes. And so. I've been, you know, by my, the voters that voted for me and through other um, people within my own party have been, you know, pretty good to me. It's just what changed my mind to actually uh, resign as of now was basically that um, I was concerned about what it would mean, you know, a, a, a according to my ability to um, legislate. Um, I was concerned about um, you know, what it would mean to my image, which is already uh, damaged. Um, so I, 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 th I did it under my terms and not because anyone asked me to. That's, uh, and that's why you're here. It's because uh, when I called you, I said, look, uh, <clears throat> one way or another, this has to stop. Either you're going to go forward or you're going to go backwards. Mm -hmm. And I said, how would you like just the, the time just to talk and to, to how you feel? And I'm glad you are here. And uh, uh, I think, honestly, I think in a, you did the right thing. Uh, at the end, I'll have a little comment, which is not the right thing. But uh, now you're transgender. That's interesting how, how now that it's sort of over, it, there's an interest in it. Do you feel like you now can talk more about it? I, I, I think um, I, I could. Um, and, uh, you know, it's been amazing because uh, I have um, uh, supporters all over the place who have informed me that because of me, even despite all of this that's been going on, I still inspired them. Um, any long cross the country, any emails or something I, like that? I, um, I haven't heard much from you know, people from across the country or out of the country, but one thing, I, I'm not going to mention any names, but there's, uh, you may, may have heard about uh, a transgender third grader in the city and this, this third grader and her family live in my district, and I've been on the phone with them every day since this started. And, you know, this little girl was switched from one school to another because of her gender identity. And it is my understanding that um, she hadn't informed any of her friends uh, of her gender identity and, you know, what kind of, you know, it, if she was a girl or a boy or whatnot, and once this little girl heard of me, she went ahead and told her mother, I want to tell my friends and I want to tell the, the teachers, you know, who I really am. And she did that and had no complications and she cited to her mother that she did it because of me, that I inspired her and to know that I've inspired people within the 
trans community or the uh, LGBT community at large is, is a, an extreme honor. And, you know, whether or not I actually took the seat that I was elected to, to represent, uh, I still was the first to receive enough votes to win the election. And with that, regardless of what happens from here forth, I will always have this distinct honor of the, being the historically first uh, well, it's, it, it, it's, a, it's an honor, but yeah. you're paying for it, too. Yes, I'm paying. So you're paying a the, price. Yes, I am. Is there anyone else who has a question? All right. So you talked about how um, you didn't know that you were possibly violating any laws with running. Um, so do you think a change needs to be made in terms of the policy or the process um, at the state level? Because apparently there is no, there's nothing on the filing form that asks you about your um, your, your previous felonies, and I'm just curious if you think that needs to be changed. Well, I'd be, I'd, I'd say, you know, it's a difficult call to say if we should specifically put it uh, on a question on the papers that we file for, to declare our candidacy and or to uh, require state officials to undergo background checks, because the fact is, you can still be a felon and serve an elected office in New Hampshire, you just must first satisfy the uh, the state's requirements. And again, like I said, in my instance, I believe I've done that. But as far as the, the laws, uh, a lot of the state statutes in New Hampshire, not just this one that's in question, are very vague. And I think um, the laws, at some point, you know, as time goes on, we should look at them and make them more specific so we know how to more easily uh, interpret them. Because if, if... You're not talking about having laws that would say that you'll go through a background check. What you're talking about is just what's taking place yeah. with you is so complicated yes. that the Attorney General, lawyers, it's, it's just interpreted four or five different ways. Yes. So you, clarity of that. Yeah, I think it, like that, sh this one, in essence, once we figure out what is going on and whether or not I was legally eligible to run and serve uh, or whichever, um, I believe that, like this one, we should, uh, what, you know, we should probably put this law before, uh, a committee and have it reworded with its same intent but reworded so it's more clear so therefore in the future we won't be sitting here um, with another candidate uh, resigning or may not be resigning based on the fact that we're all so so confused um, and as far as uh, you know the question I, I'll go back to the question also for the you know if you know we should put down on the paperwork or if we should undergo background checks um, you know I think we should leave it to um, someone's you know moral character or moralness to to be honest with the voters like I was um, and that's because that's they, no one know, asked you no. you okay but I mean the ones that like I've said that did ask were informed, so I never once anybody like asked you about anyone. your convictions. Um, nobody, before this all came about, nobody specifically asked. Um, you know what the details were, but um, you know I could write down a list of uh, any number of people that I know for a fact voted for me that also knew, knew that you that had I was a at, yes. And um, as a matter of fact, one of the the voters that voted for me uh, is someone that. Um, I volunteer with at another organization and he wanted me to go on the board of directors there and when he conducted the background check and he realized what was on my background he couldn't let me serve on the board of directors there but he was also a voter in my district and still voted for me despite you know what was on my background. Any other questions? Um, so if you could go back to the beginning of the whole election cycle. Uh, would you still run? And if so, what would you do differently? Number one. Uh, and then the last question is, uh, what are you going to do from here forth? Well, 
In the, I think in the, I think uh, I would have been, I, I think I probably, I, I don't know how much more I would have promoted the fact that I have a background. I, I know I may have um, uh, been more, a little bit, you know, more open about it so more people could have known. So, you know, there was, was ne there would be never any sort of question to anyone that I may or may not have deceived anyone. Um, and I know, what was the other parts of the question? What you're going to be doing. Um, and what am what are you I going to be doing from here? Oh, what am I going to be doing from here forth? Well, um, I really I'm not sure what I'm going to do about the selectman position. Um, You're waiting for an interpretation. On I'm that. waiting for an interpretation okay. if on that. But as far as you know, uh, the campaign was concerned. Uh, I don't really think I would have done much of anything differently uh, because you know I I don't know. And I don't really care how much my opponents or running mates spent on their campaigns, but I will note this. I spent very little on my campaign, and I had maximum reach. Anybody else? Anybody have questions? This is my last one. Sorry. Um, That's okay. <laughs> so as far as the selectman position goes, uh, if it's determined that you can still hold this role, um, do you think there's a conflict of interest if you um, work the polls for this special election that's going to be replacing you, essentially? Um, good question. Uh, okay, that, that is a good question. <coughs> um, well, if it's, if it's determined that I am clear to serve in this position um, as, selectman. as selectman, I would, um, you know, according to, you know, well, let's go back for a moment. You know, you know, if we turn that a little bit to what the election was on the 6th, and I also worked the election that day, and because, you know, uh, I was sworn to be there, I um, still had to work the polls. No, you were running for state representative. I was running for state you representative, were running the poll. you were and in. I was also uh, uh, working the process to run the poll. Oh, why did you say that? Now the, now the Attorney General will have another well, question no. to ask. See, you when we so. went through our trainings, no, I'm only um, it was made, and I specifically asked these questions that, um, of the city clerk during these, these trainings, you know, what can a candidate and what can't a candidate do? And he basically uh, said, you have to be there because you were sworn to be there, but we, you know, uh, I could say if the voters had any um, needed assistance filling out their ballots or needed anything uh, like as far as uh, working the tabulator machine, that whole area I was kept away from to avoid any sort of conflict of interest. And I specifically was working the voter affidavits uh, that because if, uh, as we know in the last election we had to show identification and if they didn't have identification, they could fill out an affidavit. So I was the, the person right there by the door, just making sure that they were, had everything ready for the uh, ballot clerks. And um, It didn't influence you in any way? didn't influence. I didn't get to see any ballots as they were going into the, the uh, ballot box. And that's an, another interesting part, that at the end of the night, when we had to do any sort of hand count or anything with the tabulator machine, it was required that I stay away from that area to avoid any conflict of interest. Ah, that's yes. interesting. And because when, when I was out, uh, you know, I was elected. And, uh, but when I was out, it was interesting. Uh, I, we could not walk in with anything no. on us saying that, you know, vote for Ken Gage or, yep. or whatever. And there's a, a uh, whole bunch of, and, and that's. But you were yeah. not allowed to go over next to the machine. No, no, I couldn't go near the machine. And I couldn't go anywhere near, unless I was actually doing casting my ballot. That was the only time I was allowed to be near the machine or near the voters. Um, and so, as far as um, that's concerned, um, you know, on election day, uh, I'm. I don't know who. If we do have a special election on that particular election day, um, I don't know who will be running. Um, I I really hope we have some good candidates running and I don't think it would be a conflict of interest anymore because I would have no 
no, um, uh, no, no dog in the fight anymore, if you will. It'll be, you know, it'll just be me in my independent role, which I must note in Nashua selectmen are nonpartisan positions. So I have to go in there of independent mind and, you know, follow the laws and follow the uh, rules and regulations that are set forth by state and federal law. And um, so I don't think it would be a conflict of interest. Um, um, but I also, I really haven't made up my mind. I'm just, right now on that, I'm waiting to, to figure out what the statute means. Any other questions? Well, we've got probably about eight more minutes. Uh, I would like to say a few things. Uh, you know, we're, our motto in a state is live free or die, and our attitude is, you know, lead, follow, or get out of the way. Mm -hmm. uh, I must say that I think the media has been very good about this. Now, no one has brought up uh, your sexual preference or, or your feelings uh, about being a man or a woman. Mm -hmm. uh, very unusual. The only questions I've heard is after you resign, the questions were asked. I thought that was very good. But I also think, and I've said this to you, I also think that you really didn't have to. I believe the law will simply say that you fulfilled everything you should have. Mm -hmm. I have looked at it. I've talked to a number of people about it, but the Attorney General is still looking at it. And I'm really kind of upset about the whole thing. And I think probably what I'm upset more uh, is how everybody uh, at the end has to use this as some, their last political, political fight. Now, what you have, you have the opportunity. There's the camera. Uh, mm -hmm. What would you like to say to people? Um, I am... Uh, deeply saddened that it, you know, had to come to this, uh, what I would call tragic end. Um, but as I said earlier, it's this is in this resignation is in the best interest of myself, my party, the citizens of my district, and I'd even go as far as to say for the state of New Hampshire as a whole. Um, and. I, I, my wish is that we can just uh, move on from here. Um, I'd also like to, to mention that, you know, people, it's, it's human nature. We make mistakes. Whether they may be questionable or, you know, they may sound like, oh, well, that doesn't sound like it's a lapse in judgment or it, it doesn't matter. Whatever happened is in my past. I have moved on from it and never again do I ever plan on committing any sort of crime for any reason. <laughs> it's my... You can't see that, yeah. yeah. My, my, my goal in life is to serve my community and to, um, you know, as I, as I always say, since the day I walked out of jail, I have always tried to do something that's going to better myself and to also possibly help someone else. Do you, have you felt that you've said what you wish to say? Yeah, so at this point, you know, I think it's all been said, and uh, I appreciate the and opportunity. Resigned. I appreciate the opportunity that uh, Representative Gidge has given me today, and, and again, like he said, it's, I have resigned, and it's over in my eyes now. And also, let's thank uh, Richard Gagnon here at uh, yes. Access Nashua. Uh, it's a cable, um, you know, local cable network for the city. It's, uh, it's uh, hard to run, but this is a, a nice studio, and uh, it's uh, very hard to do this and get this on the air, and there's a mm -hmm. lot of, so uh, we want to thank Richard. Also, this will be put on YouTube, so if any of you would like to go to YouTube or you would like to uh, tell people about it, uh, go to YouTube. It should be up sometime, oh, I would say later today, later this evening. Uh, today is the 29th, I believe. Mm -hmm. could, could be all right. Yeah. It's also a full moon, which means everyone's a little crazy. So on that note, uh, my name is Ken Gidge, and you can get me, if you wish, at K Gidge. That's K as in simple K, G-I-D-G-E, K Gidge at AOL.com. And I want to thank you very much, and I do appreciate it, and thank you for asking the questions. It's certainly probably more questions in the future, but uh, about your life, etc. Mm -hmm. But thank you. I do thank appreciate it. Thank you very it. much. Okay. Thank you for watching.